All right, welcome to Unipest. Hopefully you're a happy technician and you're enjoying your job thus far. Right now we're going to talk about what the uniform requirements are at Unipest, okay? Now, first and foremost, we have PPE, which is our personal protective equipment. This is the clothing or the devices that we are required by law to have. Now, from top to bottom, they include, you need your eye protection. I always have eye protection with me. These are glasses that have an ANSI rating that also covers the temples of your uh, face so the overspray cannot get in your eyes, okay? So make sure you have ANSI approved eyewear. If you are in an enclosed space uh, spraying pesticides or spraying pesticides over your head for a prolonged period of time, you need to make sure that you have your respirator. And that respirator has to be a NIOSH approved respirator with certain ratings. We'll go over that in another video as well. Following down the body, you've got your long sleeved shirt. Your uniform shirt counts as your long long sleeve shirt, your PPE. This is so, once again, you don't have overspray on your arms. It is a little bit hot during the summer, yes, but that's why we give you water and air conditioning. Now, your pants, okay, are uh, part of your uniform as well, but also your PPE. You cannot wear shorts while being a technician at Unipest because you need to cover your whole body. And then finally, down at the tips of my toes, we have my boots. Uh, inexpensive boots, uh, as little as 40 or $50 at Walmart, are compliant with state law. They just cannot ab absorb pesticides, um, or else you're going to give yourself uh, some problems, not only with the law, but maybe with your health. So they just have to make sure that they are um, boots that can repel pesticides. And then, if you're ever doing a job and you're on site, besides your eyewear, and um, your long sleeve pants and long sleeve shirts, you always have to make sure that you are issue, issued gloves. Now, if you're going to do rep repetitive spray jockey work, uh, we recommend you use the large, big, fat, uh, reusable um, neoprene gloves, okay? Proper PPE requires that your gloves do not have any kind of insulated or material lining. They have to be gloves that are simply neoprene gloves without any kind of lighting. So at the filming of this video, uh, you could still use smaller millimeter gloves like these. However, the law is changing soon to require the use of 14 mil gloves, okay? So you have to make sure that you have, according to law, your eye protection, okay? Your arm protection, meaning your shirt, your leg protection, meaning your pants, your hand protection, meaning your gloves, and your mouth or respiratory tract protection, meaning your respirator, if you're using pesticides that require one. Uh, pesticides that require a respirator are extremely rare in our job. Uh, most spray jockeys never really have to use them. So that's our PPE that's required. Now besides the boots, the pants, the shirt, the gloves, the respirator, and the eye goggles, there's a couple of extra things that we as a company require beyond the state's requirements. One of them is your bump cap, okay? This bump cap, as you can see, it embarrassingly has a lot of bumps on it. Oftentimes when you're walking around and you're spraying with a BNG or a Birchmeyer, your head is going to come up against a bird feeder that maybe you didn't see, or an overhang you maybe didn't see, and you're going to bump it. Uh, in order to avoid any type of injury, we require that you wear bump caps. Also, I highly recommend that technicians have on their belt several things. I like to keep my phone out of the way so it's not in my pockets where I don't have to grab it when I have gloves. So I have a pocket holster for my phone. I also always have on me, as part of my uniform requirement, a multi-tool. These multi-tools are useful in a jam. Uh, there's a million and one reasons why you need a screwdriver or why you need some of the many tools that are on a multi-tool. And then we also always carry with us a flashlight. The number one most important thing an inspector can have is a very effective flashlight that I have mounted on my belt. Now, as long as you have all of these things on your persons, you pretty much have all the uniform requirements necessary. There's a couple of specialty items that we include in your truck and we recommend that you have, just because uh, every once in a while you might be required to do some odd jobs. That includes crawl space and knee pads. If you ever have to go underneath a home, you're gonna need to use a crawl space. And unless you wanna kill your knees, we recommend that you uh, always have with you a pair of knee pads. Uh, this makes your job a lot more comfortable. They're not required by law. However, um, it's, it's, it's for your convenience and your comfort. Now, you always have to remember to have extras of everything that I just described to you. 
one, two is one and one is none is a common phrase amongst Navy SEALs because if you have two radios and one breaks, well now all of a sudden you have one that functions and you can use. Whereas if you have one radio and it breaks, all of a sudden you have no communication with your home base. So always have extras. That means you need to make sure you always have extra gloves on you in case you run out of the gloves that are in your box or in case the reusable black gloves you have break. Make sure that you have a clean uniform top and bottom, pants and shirt, so in case you have to crawl somewhere dirty or in case you have a pesticide spill, you have a uniform shirt that you can change into. You always should have your respirator as well as an extra inside the cab of the vehicle. In the compliance bag, we always have extras. And um, you should always make sure, if possible, um, that you have at least one set of extra boots inside of the truck. So um, call us if you have any questions about uh, PPE or any of the uniform requirements, and we'll see you in the next video.